Hi everybody, Jimmy DeYoung, and welcome to another edition of Prophecy Moment. We're going to take five or ten minutes. We're going to discuss an issue in our world today, and we're going to talk about how it prophetically is setting up the end-time scenario that's found in God's Word. I want to remind you of my website, prophecytoday.com. That's a location where we cover the entire area of Bible prophecy. On my home page, on a daily basis, we list the 10 leading news stories. That's our top 10. And you can go there, double click on that story. It'll take you to the original site. It'll bring you back. I'll give you a prophetic perspective of that report on a current event that may well be setting the stage for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. I have a Prophecy Q&A section that's on the left-hand column. If you'll scroll down, you'll see Prophecy Q&A. There you can go and get your question, your prophecy question answered. And if there's not an answer or the question that you have in mind, send me an email at jimmy at prophecytoday.com and we'll make sure you get an answer as soon as we can get it to you. That's my website, prophecytoday.com. Don't forget, we have a prophecy bookstore, many great materials that will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. Well, the headline we're going to be looking at today, America's national debt is setting the stage for the appearance of Antichrist. You know, there's conversations on both sides of the spectrum, both Democrat and or Republicans, who are talking about the national debt. They talk a lot about it, but basically they don't do anything about it. They just keep reminding us this is what we owe. For example, the national debt as of today is $4 trillion. That would be somewhere in the area of about $83,000 per person, per American, that if we had to pay it back, we'd have to spend that kind of money. That's our national debt today. And in essence, it is really probably about $30 trillion. But I want to remind you that does not include Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. Those items are not included in that debt number of $30 trillion. If you include those three items, Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, it would be up about $100 trillion, and that would be much, much more money that each and every American would owe if we were to pay back that national debt. You know what happens when you owe so much money in a nation of the world? In essence, in order to be able to survive, you have to start printing money. Well, you know what that causes? They tell me, and I am not an economic advisor. I don't know a whole lot about economics. I'm pretty much a neophyte in that area. I work hard at trying to keep my, my bank book, my bank account up to date. But in light of that, they tell me that if indeed you print money, you're going to cause inflation to come on the scene. In other words, what may have cost $5 a couple of years ago, you print more money. Now it costs $10, maybe as high as $15. There's a phrase that's being used by these financial advisors called hyperinflation. I have a broadcast partner who has been a financial advisor for over 30 years, great experience in the field, and I'm going to bring him to the broadcast table. His name is Ron Murrell. And we're going to have a conversation about hyperinflation, about what do you do when you have hyperinflation, what does it cause, and what would be the results of hyperinflation. I want you to listen to this conversation I'm going to have with Ron Murrell. We need to get back to reality, and that is talking about the inflation situation. You use the term hyperinflation. What does that mean? You know, we can certainly see this debt of being a cause of hyperinflation. When a nation builds up massive debt, the world can lose confidence in that nation's ability to pay back what it borrowed. When that happens, the nation's currency will often plunge, and then it takes more and more currency for the people of the country to buy goods and services. Hyperinflation is not like inflation, Jimmy, that builds over time. Hyperinflation actually happens suddenly. 
that what you're talking about when uh, the old phrase has been used, uh, it'll take a, a, a wheelbarrow full of money to be able to buy a loaf of bread? Is that what we're talking about, hyperinflation? Yeah, that's right, Jimmy. After World War I, Germany's hyperinflation was so severe that the nation was wide open for a strongman leader to ride in on a white horse to save the day. Germany's debt of 132 billion gold marks, or about 269 billion U.S. dollars today, was so crushing it took 92 years to pay it off. And I understand that uh, with the, the situation economically there in Germany, right at the end of World War One, the mid 20s, in the beginning of uh, the 1920s, we're talking about a situation that brought forth a man named Adolf Hitler. I read what Winston Churchill had to say about Hitler. He made the statement, you either have a savior who brings you out of this economic chaos, or you're going to have a tyrant. And that's pretty much what happened, wasn't it, Ron? Yes, it was, Jimmy. Uh, Germany was in such dire straits, they were open for anyone to come in that had a plan, anyone that, that had an idea on how they could get the country back on its feet and become an economic power again. And uh, certainly that led to uh, Hitler's rise, uh, which is uh, absolutely uh, parallel to Revelation uh, 6, uh, 5 and 6. Yeah, I I was going to say, you and I are both students of Bible prophecy, and boy, that prophetic parallel there in Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, seems to be exactly what we're talking about, and that would be, of course, happening in the tribulation period. Let me remind our listeners that we're the location where it says a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. I understand wheat would be enough food to take care of uh, a family for a day, or a barley would be animal food for a day, but uh, it's talking about a penny, and at that point in time, a penny actually was a day's wages. That's really hyperinflation, is it not, Ron? Yes, it is, Jimmy. It's absolutely correct. Talk to me about the fact that since in World War I, at the end of World War I, this type of economic situation turned to Hitler for the salvation from this economic chaos that was happening in their part of the world. Now, when we talk about hyperinflation, measure of wheat for a penny through measures of barley for a penny, in the tribulation period that comes after the rapture of the church, This economic situation is certainly setting up for the Antichrist to come on the scene. Would you agree with that, Ron? Yes, I do, Jimmy. And I think what we see with this type of hyperinflation, we see it actually in Venezuela today. We have a form of hyperinflation going on there as the country's currency fell apart. So we have a real-life example of what it looks like right now, going on in the world right now. That was a very informative bit of information that we got from Ron. May I take just a moment as we conclude Prophecy Moment today to bring several things to your attention. He did bring out the phrase hyperinflation, and he gave us somewhat of a definition of hyperinflation. But what I noticed the most when he was talking about it is that it happens instantly. It's not over a period of time. It comes about pretty quickly. And then we talked about the fact that after World War I, back in the 1920s, Germany had hyperinflation. And because of that, they were about to have to destroy the entire state of Germany because they economically could not go on. They had hyperinflation. But what happened at that point in time? Well, that brought a man named Adolf Hitler to power. He had promised that he could bring Germany out of this economic chaos. The man Winston Churchill made a statement about Adolf Hitler. He said to the Germans, he's either going to be a savior or a tyrant. Well, we all know that he became a tyrant. Now, I think there is a prophetic parallel in the tribulation period, which is going to happen after the rapture of the church for a seven-year period of time. And at the beginning of that seven-year tribulation period, you would want to go to the book of Revelation chapter 6. Go with me. Take your Bibles. Let's go over to Revelation chapter 6. Oh, by the way, as you're finding your place in the Bible, let me tell you, I have a couple of items that will help you study Bible prophecy, and especially the book of Revelation. This is a DVD documentary, my walk through 
the book of Revelation, and I do it chronologically. I do it on the ground there in Israel. It'll be a great study helping you to understand how chronologically the book of Revelation unfolds. Now, this is a, a video that will help you. Here's a five-hour audio series on CD. This is my teaching. And remember, I said it unfolds chronologically, not numerically. I would suggest you get this and study it so you can understand how chronologically the book unfolds. You're not going to be able to understand Revelation unless you study it chronologically. And if you're going to teach it, it must be taught chronologically for the lay people to understand this very important book in Bible prophecy. Those three items, the DVD and the CD, but here's my book on Revelation. It's a common commentary, and it's a user-friendly commentary. I'm a simple guy. I had to write a simple commentary on the book of Revelation, Revelation and Chronology. It's all written down so you can understand and then study through the book of Revelation. Well, now I hope that's given you time to find in your Bible, the book of Revelation, last book in the Bible, I want you to go to chapter 6. Chapter 6 gives us the prophecies, at least six of the seven seal judgments. Chapter 8, verse 1 would be the seventh seal judgment, but chapter 6 lays out these judgments. Look here at the third seal judgment. We go down chapter 6 and verse 5, and when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse, and he that sat upon him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. Now, in this time, 95 A.D., when John wrote the book of Revelation, a penny was a day's wages. That would help you to understand what it's talking about. And if there's anything that illustrates hyperinflation, it has to be this. A measure of wheat. That's enough wheat for a family of four to have food for one day, and it would cost a day's wages in order to feed that family of four. Three measures of barley. That would most likely be food for the animals. It would take a day's wages uh, to purchase the food to feed your animals. What an interesting example of hyperinflation. And this will be the third judgment beginning in the first six months of that tribulation period. And so, oh, by the way, remember what happened with hyperinflation in Germany right at the end of World War One? It brought a man, a politician to power, who said he could take care of everything. Well, this hyperinflation, this third seal judgment, a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. If you look back up here in chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, that's discussing the prophecy of the Antichrist, a tyrant who will claim to be the Savior, who will claim to be the Messiah. He's a false messiah. But you see what's setting the stage for that false messiah? The debt, the hyperinflation, will bring forth the Antichrist. I told you at the beginning of the broadcast, America's debt is setting the stage for the Antichrist to come on the scene. Now, that might be the case, but there's one thing that has to happen before the Antichrist does come on the scene. The Bible tells us before Antichrist shows up claiming to be the Messiah, the Savior of the world that's going to help everybody economically, before that happens, the rapture is going to take place. And having said everything we've said on the telecast today, you can recognize that rapture is ready to happen at any moment. And having said that, nothing left for me to say, except let's keep looking up until.